Hey, this is Cameron. Welcome back to the Busy Gardener channel. Today, we are gonna look at what happens when your fruit tree starts to bloom in fall time. What in the world? Let's get busy. Okay, so everybody knows that in springtime, these deciduous trees come to life and they bloom and it's gorgeous. The pear trees and the apple trees and the nectarines, gorgeous, pink and white and beautiful colors. The problem is, is that fall time hits and these trees are supposed to be going nighty night in waiting for next spring. So they're supposed to be dormant over the winter and then come alive in the next spring. Well, when you come out here and all of a sudden you notice, it's today is the first day of November, and you see these gorgeous pear blossoms, or like some of these others have had some of these blooms. They're sometimes called rogue blooms. And rogue blooms are these blooms that happen during the off season, when trees are supposed to look like this and going dormant, um, and leaves yellowing, falling off. You come through here and sometimes you'll find these little these little blooms. Well, let's talk about why that is, and then we can talk about what to do about it. Okay, so with some fruit, um, some types of fruit and, and, and trees will bloom, and fruit a couple of times a year. There are examples of that, um, like some, some of these berries, like some uh, blackberries can sometimes do that on like the primocane cultivars. But when it comes to most of these other actual trees, deciduous trees, that's a bad thing. Um, oftentimes if you see this type of thing going on, it's often the result of some sort of serious stress on the tree. So this year, for example, our trees, we water our trees really well. In fact, they're getting watered right now. Um, oh, although I just see my, ugh, my shade, Thing just smashing my lapin's cherry. Oh my goodness, that's an emergency. Let me go fix that. Okay, I've got this cloth back here how it ought to be. Anyway, as I was saying, we um, we do a good job of watering our trees and um, you know, that's, that's why they look like they do even during difficult times like we had this summer where the temperatures were 115 degrees or 18 degrees or whatever it was here in the orchard. We water our trees really well, and so um, they generally avoid a lot of the stress. But when it's so hot like that, or there's some sort of other stress that goes on, sometimes these trees will uh, release a hormone that makes them think they're coming out of dormancy. They just get confused, and those little buds that are supposed to wait till next year, they pop open now. And sometimes the idea around these rogue blooms happening after they've been stressed is that the tree may have thought that it, it needs to just survive and so it's gonna try to create some sort of seed, um, a fruit that's gonna drop down the seed and try to carry it on. It's like, tell the world my story. Almost like a last ditch effort for survival and just furthering the species. And so sometimes that's a reason why these things will, will uh, bloom, has sent out these rogue blooms out of season. Now you might be thinking, this is great. I get a second crop of fruit. Yes, kind of. The problem is, is that a lot of times, and especially in the colder climates, anything that buds now and turns into fruit is not gonna make it through the winter. It's too cold, you don't have enough sun to produce a decent type of fruit. The systems of that tree are shutting down. And so generally speaking, a second flush of uh, flowers and blooms that turns into any kind of fruit is not gonna make it. And so all that's happening is that that is uh, spending resources from the tree that are not gonna actually yield anything. And it's real disappointing. They're really pretty. Um, whoa, that looks like snow up there. It's not snow, it's 90 degrees today. Um, so as much as it pains me to do it, what I want is I want this tree not to be thinking while it should be going dormant. I don't want it thinking that it ought to be producing fruit. This beautiful little pear, which I wish I wanted to fruit in the, in the springtime, should not be fruiting now. And so unfortunately, I've got to come off and pick off these blooms. This is going to send signals, little hormone signals down to the tree that it's, it's not gonna need to devote any resources to it and it's gonna enable um, the tree to go dormant uh, instead of using any type of resources that it needs to have. We don't want those used up right now. So it's absolutely killing me to do this because I love when there's fruit on trees. 
but these things are gonna be taking away from any future stuff. Look at this. Look at what happened up here. Can you see these? All of these are fruit. This is an actual fruit. This got pollinated and it would set otherwise. So it, takes, it gives me no pleasure to do this. But what you wanna be out there when you're doing this gardening stuff is you want to be a principled gardener. You wanna be able to make decisions that are gonna be a blessing for your tree and for what you're trying to do. Um, and so, oh man, it's killing me to come here and just wipe out all of these blooms. Up here, some more blooms, uh, little fruit, very immature fruit. Uh, this thing must have flowered this whole crazy pear. And this happened on my apple, uh, happened on my stone fruit, happened on my, um, yeah, number of the stone fruit had this sort of thing, not, not as extensive. Most of this pear, I feel like this already just spent its blooms on, on these rogue blooms, these crazy thing. So yeah, you've got, you wanna take those things off and let your tr tree fruit when it really is supposed to fruit. Sometimes if it's a very early variety, like sometimes like Anna apple, for example, will set a second crop of fruit, but that's a little different because Anna is ready to harvest like in July. And so if it, you know, sets fruit in, let's say in July and there's some blooms, then you've got really until like October to pick it. But something like a Granny Smith, or these pears that are really not ready until late summer, um, those are not gonna work well for you in doing that. So anyway, rogue blooms are a thing. I'm gonna have to walk my way through here and see if I can spot any others. I hope this has helped you. If, if you wondered what to do when your tree is blooming out of season, hopefully this gives you a little bit of an explanation. It's a bummer to have to take those off, but be that principled gardener. Anyway, sure appreciate you tuning in. If you're not yet subscribed to the Busy Gardener channel, this channel, why don't you hit the button? It's so fast and easy. And then you'll know if you hit the notification bell when new videos are coming up. And um, yeah, we'd love to do that. And if you put uh, hit the like button, that lets me and other people know that the video is worth watching. Anyway, sure appreciate you tuning in. And whether you got one rogue bloom in your orchard or 500, until next time, stay busy.